A very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers uh, in Christ. So, last week we studied about how to study the Bible and this week we are going to study the first topic uh, in a topical study. Uh, how our Lord Jesus uh, is the Savior of this world. So, last week we studied about 10 methods, uh, isn't it? So, the 10th method, the topical method, we are going to see the first topic and that is uh, the Jesus uh, uh, being uh, the Savior of the whole mankind. We all know that Jesus died for our sins. You see, that uh, we were sinners. Uh, Jesus uh, came to this earth to uh, so pay our penalty and he dies on the cross and he saved us. How is it? How, uh, if you see, it is like if a police person catches us uh, for violating any uh, traffic uh, rules, uh, then uh, we need to pay the fine. Imagine at that moment uh, we are not able to pay the fine. If uh, one of our friends who is along with us, he pays our fine, then a police person will leave us. Uh, so that is how Jesus, uh, you see, he paid uh, the penalty uh, because the wages of sin was death and he paid our penalty and saved us from death. Therefore, we read in the Bible that uh, there is no other name uh, given under heaven for men to be saved than the name of Jesus. In Acts 4, 12, it is given. So if Jesus is the only name given under heaven to be saved, then when will the world be saved? Why? Because today, if you see, the Christianity is just only 33% in the entire world. You see, and among them, we can consider the nominal Christians also who are not really Christians, but to believe in Jesus only for namesake. Even if you take them also, it's 33%. What about the rest of the world? Now, how can we call Jesus as the world savior? Because in John 4, 42, it clearly says that Jesus is the savior of the world. Savior not only of Christians, but of the entire world. Then, how Jesus is the savior of the whole world? Many people have died in disasters. You see, terrorist attack, earthquake, accidents, war, various other ways people have died. Even the people who were living during the days of Jesus, the entire nation of Israel were not saved. So then, how can we call Jesus as the world savior? The people of Israel themselves, you see, they crucified our Lord on the cross. But Jesus was not the savior for them. You see, dear brethren, how will Jesus uh, save the world? Many people claim that uh, before the second event of Christ, uh, the whole world will be converted. Uh, but what does the Bible say? Let us read a few verses in the Bible. Uh, can somebody read Luke 17, chapter 26 and 27? Can somebody read with that? Luke 17, chapter 26 and 27. Okay, I will read. Okay. Thank Wait you. a minute. I, I will read. Thank you. One minute, I'm... Seventeen, twenty-six, twenty-seven, And as it was in the days of No, so shall it be also in the days of Son of the Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that No entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Very good, brother. So, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of Son of Man. So, during the days of Noah, the whole world was never turned to God. That's the reason the flood came. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, similarly it will be in the days of the Son of Man. The whole world, forget about being converted before coming of Jesus, the world will be in a very sinful condition. That's what the Bible says. Even Jesus said in Luke 18, 8, that when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. That means the in the world, it will be a faithless condition. Then, dear brethren, you see, if this is the condition of the world after 2023 years, what about the people who lived before Jesus? How will they be saved? And how can Jesus be called as a savior? If you ask this question to somebody, generally the answer comes is that uh, before Christ, uh, there was a conscience period and there was a law period. So they will be judged as per the law and as per the conscience. 
But what does the Bible say? But the Bible says clearly in Romans 3.20 that uh, by the deeds of the law, nobody shall be justified before Christ. You see, before God. And it also says that by the law, you see, is the knowledge of sin. And if uh, somebody was justified by the law, then the death of Christ itself is a waste. So let us read a uh, verse, uh, you see, Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. Vivek Shankar Badar. Shankar Badar, can you read Romans 3.20? I have um, no English Bible. Okay. Subindra Raj Badar. Stephen Badar, can you read? Stephen Badar, you are there. Can you read the Bible? I will read. Uh, uh, I am writing, please. Please. I am okay. writing. I will read. Okay. One minute. Uh, our Lou, Roman 320, yeah? Correct. Roman 320. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Very good. See, by the law is the knowledge of sin. So nobody can be justified by the deeds of the law. Okay. If nobody is justified by the deeds of the law, what about the conscience? After giving everything in writing, the conscience does not work. Means, do you think when nothing has been told, the conscience will work properly? No. Hence, in conclusion, Apostle Paul tells in Romans 3.10, all are sinners, all are unwriters and fallen short of the grace of God. Read Romans 3, 9 and 10. Stephen Brother, can you read Romans 3, 9 and yes. 10? What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Very good, brother. There is none righteous, no, not a one. See, this clearly says all are under sin, whether the Jews or the Gentiles. So, that means all the people before Jesus Christ should go to hell. And only 34% are saved and the rest of the people are going to hell means... How can we call Jesus as the world's savior? So many people are born insane. So many children are born dead. They live only for a few moments and pass away. What sin they have done, their brethren, that they just pass on like that. They're not saved. They are not accepted the only name given under heaven, the name of Jesus Christ. And how is Jesus the world's savior? This is our topic we'll see from the Bible. Let us read. First Timothy, second chapter, verses three to six. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read First Timothy, second chapter, three? Yes. Verses? Thank you. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, and the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all. To be testified in due time. Very good, brother. See, Jesus who gave a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So, Jesus gave a ransom for all. What is this word ransom? If you see, in Greek, the word is anti lutron. The word anti lutron means a corresponding price. Like, for example, if you go to the pawnbroker, and give 10 grams of gold, how much amount he will give us? He will give us the exact amount equivalent to the 10 grams of gold. He won't give us extra. He won't give us less. That equal price, the correct price, you see, that is the corresponding price. And the Bible says that Jesus paid a corresponding price, you see, to save mankind. That means he paid a ransom. Now, what is this ransom? You see, you remember everybody, I hope, uh, who are all in India, they can uh, remember this photo. You see, the forest brigand of Virapan. You see, he is kidnapped the famous celebrity, Dr. Rajkumar, mm -hmm. and demanded a ransom. If you pay the ransom, I release him. Then paid the ransom and got Rajkumar released. So this is how Jesus paid a ransom. You see, to whom did Jesus pay the ransom? What did he pay? What price did he pay? Let us read Exodus 21st chapter 23 to 25. Uh, 
Subindra Rajbadar, can you read Exodus 21st chapter 23 to 25? Yes. Please read. Okay. And if any mischief follow, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, food for food, burning for burning, strike for strike. Very good. So this is God's justice. God's justice clearly demanded. You see, what? Life for life, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, leg for a leg, life for a life. For one life, only one life. For only one eye, only one eye. Not multiple eyes. This is God's strict scale of justice. That's what God's scale of justice demanded. Like for example, if you have one bus ticket, how many people can travel? We can travel only one person. We can travel two persons. The Bible says that after manage husband and wife for one, doesn't mean that we take one bus ticket and travel in the bus. You see, in one bus ticket, only one person can travel. So similarly, God's justice demanded one for one, one life for one life. Then if Jesus Christ was one, how did he redeem the entire world? You see, Jesus could not, you see, give his life, his one life for entire world. But yet he gave. How? How did he give? Dear brethren, you see, Jesus had only one life and that one life he could give to only one person. You know, that one person to whom Jesus gave his life, who is that person? That is Adam. That first, very Adam. Good. Yes, our first father, Adam. So Jesus gave the ransom, the corresponding price to our father, Adam. Why? Why did he pay to Adam? Because Adam was the one who was created first. Hmm? He was created through Adam. And we all have come through that one pair, our father and mother, you see, Adam and Eve. So we are their generation. You see, God did not create everybody. You see, he created only one man and gave him the dominion of the entire earth. Through that one pair, we all have come. Therefore, the Bible says that we are all bread relatives. We all have, you see, common, you see, huh? Relationship. We are all blood relatives. Let us read Acts 17.26. Acts 17.26. Stephen, brother, can you read Acts 17.26? Yes. And then made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. See? Ah. He had made of one blood all nations of men, we are all blood relatives, dear brethren. You see, but in Garden of Eden, who ate the forbidden fruit? It was our father, Adam, who ate the forbidden fruit. But once he ate, what happened? Sin and death, its result, entered into the world. And through that one man, death passed upon everybody. God knew that as Adam has sinned, similarly his entire children will sin. Therefore, God condemned Adam's generation to death in Adam. We are all actually dying in Adam. The entire mankind today is dying in Adam. Read Romans 5 12. Uh, Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Romans 5 12? Okay, Romans 5 7. Romans Wherefore, 5, as by one man sin entered into the world, and the death by sin, and so death passed upon all the men for that all have sinned. Thank you, brother. So, it clearly says that for by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so what happened? This death passed upon everybody for all have sinned. All have sinned means what? You see, that is the reason, you see, when we are born itself, we are born with a death penalty. 
You see, therefore, you see, a small child, as soon as it is born, it stays only for a few minutes, a few days and dies. The mother asks the same question, Lord, what wrong did my child do? What sin did my child do? You are taken away. You see, the answer is even only in the Bible. The Bible says, you see, David says clearly in Psalms 51, 5, you see, he gives the answer, I was shapen in iniquity and in did, in sin, did my mother conceive me. Because everybody are born uh, as sinners in Adam. Therefore, Apostle Paul clearly said in Romans 3.10, there is none righteous. So all are condemned in Adam to death. All are tasting the death. And uh, you see, the uh, penalty of sin uh, through Adam. Okay, now let us read Romans 5.13. Tabindra Rajvadar, can you read Romans 5.13? How much? Romans? 5.13. 5? 13, yeah? Yeah. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Okay. See, it says, For until the law sin was in the world, but sin cannot be imputed. It cannot be counted because there is no law. Now, what does it mean? You see, the law was given through Moses. So, before the law gave, you see, there was sin into in this world, it seems, from Adam till Moses. You see, but that sin cannot be counted at all. Then, actually, legally, nobody should die. Correct, no? But there is no law. You can't count anybody as a sinner. You see, there is nothing that can point to out uh, that you are a sinner. But yet, uh, from Adam till Moses, everybody died, it seems. How, dear brethren, they did not die for their own sin, but they died for the sin of the Adam. They died because of the sin of their father Adam. They are all condemned to death in Adam. Continue, brother. Continue. Please continue. Subhindra brother, please continue. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the limitude of Adam's transgression with the figure of him that was to come. See, it clearly says, nevertheless, even then, you see, even then there was no law, you see, death reigned from Adam till Moses. Even over them would not sin like Adam, it seems. How is it, you see? Is it uh, a just thing to condemn a person who is not sin like Adam? Yet the Bible says that to those who did not sin like Adam, even they also tasted death. They also experienced it. They also died. How? Because they were all condemned in Adam, dear brethren. It's a very, very important thing that we need to understand that every person in this world are dying in Adam, not for the individual sins. At last, this verse says, you see, who is the figure of him that was to come? It says, Adam was a figure of a person who was to come in the future, it seems. Now, who is that person? Dear brethren, that person is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Adam, you see, was a figure of him, of our Lord Jesus Christ who was to come. Therefore, when Jesus Christ came to this earth, he came as a second Adam. Now, is there a verse in the Bible saying that Jesus is second Adam? Yes, there is a clear verse that says Jesus is the second Adam. Read 1 Corinthians 15, 45 and 47. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 15, 45 and 47? And so it is written, the first man Adam who was made a living soul, the last Adam, a quickening spirit, 47, the first man of the earth, earthy, the second man, the Lord from heaven. See, the first Adam, underline first Adam, was made a living soul. That's last Adam was the kicking spirit. So there are two Adams, the first Adam, second Adam. Who is the second Adam? The first Adam is from the earth. Adam 
the second adam clearly says he is a lord from heaven now why did our lord jesus come from heaven to earth as a second adam to pay the ransom you see we saw the scale of justice god demanded one for one life for life to give his life jesus came as a second adam why dear brethren you see why adam to give a ransom to adam why only jesus has to come you see adam had so much of children you see na any of his children could have gone and paid a ransom for adam no they could have told oh lord i will die for my father's sin please uh, take my life uh, you see somebody could have gone and given no ha huh? why that could not be a corresponding price why that would not be a ransom no dear brother that would not be a ransom why because all the sons of adam were condemned to death in adam the bible says there is none righteous so a sinner can't go and redeem a sinner that price won't be a corresponding price that price would be a lower price because adam was a perfect man so somebody a sinner going and paying for that adam can never be redeemed that is you see imbalanced you see there's a very low price that is not uh, perfect uh, justice uh, you see therefore the bible says that uh, you see none can redeem his brother okay forget about uh, human beings a angel could have come from heaven no they could have come and died for adam no telling oh i will uh, save adam i will die for him you see he could have died no why not an angel pay a ransom for adam you see dear brethren no even that also could not be paid that would have not been a corresponding price why because there is a difference between angels and human beings angels what is mean that there is the poor man and his yes angels and the sons of men that angels are created little bit higher than you see huh eh? human beings are human beings are lower than the angels hence uh, that would not be a equal corresponding price let us read psalm 8 chapter verse 4 and 5 stephen mother can you read psalm 8 chapter verse 4 yes, yes. and 5 what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou wouldst him for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor see who has made him little lower than the angels so adam was created little lower than the angels there is a difference between angels and human beings they're not on the same plane so if they're not on the same plane that ransom could not be accepted at all because that would not be a corresponding price okay you see that uh, would have been a, you see a much more uh, price than you see what god demanded uh, you see because angels are higher than human beings okay if a man could not ransom a man if angels could not ransom a man then what about the sacrifice of bulls goats in the old testament they used to give no why can't they redeem adam why can't they pay a ransom for adam dear brethren again if you see that animals are created lower than human beings therefore this could never take away sin let us read hebrews 10 chapter verse 4 savindra rajputar can you read hebrews 10 4 hebrews 10 verse 4 savindra rajputar you are there okay can i please stephen mother Hebrews 10:4 For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Oh, see, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Hence the animals can never pay the ransom. That is not a equal corresponding price. That will be a lower price. Hence dear brethren, when there was no other way for redeeming adam and his generation god sent his only son jesus to die on the cross as second adam and you see 
let us see what the bible says how jesus came to this earth in what way hebrews 2:9 uh emmanuel brother can you read hebrews 2:9 Hebrews 2 9, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of the dead, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Mm -hmm. Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. You see, very clearly it says, Jesus was made a little lower than angels. The way did we read about this verse? That uh, you see, man was created a little lower than angels. Psalm 8, chapter 4 and 5. It was saying about a perfect man, Adam. In the same way Jesus came to the brethren. See? A little lower than the angels. Crown with glory and honor. Why? To taste death for every man. Jesus came to this earth to pay a ransom. You see, that is the corresponding price. See, it's, it is not only the nature of man, it is also the exact age also. You see, Adam when he was created, he was not created as a babe. You see, he was created at the age of 30 years. Similarly, when Jesus died on the cross, when he offered you see, himself to God at River Jordan, what was his age? He was 30 years old. Lo, I Lord, I come to do thy will, O Lord. You know, all these verses, there's no need for me to show you. You see, because why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus actually dedicate his life to God at the age of 30 years? He was already ready at 12 years. He was discussing with the teachers in the temple. What did he discuss and what did he come to know? That in the law, if anybody has to serve the God, they have to serve from 30 years, beginning from 30 years to 50 years. So 30 years was the minimum age. That is the perfect man's age. Let us read Numbers 4.3, brother. Numbers 4.3. Uh, can somebody read? Subhadraj, brother, you are there? Okay. Ashish, brother, can you read Numbers 4.3? Okay. Numbers 4.3. From 30 years old and upward, even until 50 years old, all that into the, enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay. From uh, what age to what age? Uh, from 30 to 50. So, 30 is the beginning. That's the average man's age. A perfect man's age. You see, therefore, Jesus consecrated his life at the age of 30 years. Okay. Now, not only age... He came as second Adam, same nature, human nature, little lower than angels, same age, 30 years. Not only that one, the brethren, what was the penalty that God had given to Adam? What did God tell to Adam? In the day you eat the fruit thereof, what will happen? You shall surely, tell me what will happen? Die. Die. Very good. That was the penalty. Hence, Jesus, to pay the ransom, he had to die. That is the reason Jesus died on the cross. God never told to Adam that, oh, you sin, after you sin, I will, uh, you see, uh, you will come up here, I will come up there, I will open the big book, you see, I will uh, judge you as per your sin and send you to hell or heaven. Jesus never said that one, you see. And did God tell to Adam like that? No. If that was the case, then Jesus would have also suffered the same way. But no, we read the wages of sin is death. Hence, Jesus died on the cross, dear brethren. You see, but today, you see, the many of the Jehovah Witnesses, the false preachers who claim that Jesus never paid for Adam, dear brethren. You see, we should be very beware of those false teachers. You see, what does the Bible say? It clearly says that Jesus made little lower than the angels, uh, tasted death for everybody. Jesus paid the ransom for each and every mankind. Brethren. Without Jesus, without our Lord, without our Savior, we are nothing in this world. Dear brethren. Therefore, you see, uh, since uh, so many years, uh, you see, so many people have gone to that uh, what is the result of Jesus paying the ransom? Jesus paid the ransom for Adam. This is how he paid the ransom. You see, 
He came little bit older than the angels, the same nature, and gave his life as a ransom to redeem Adam. Okay. Now, what is the benefit of it? Correct, no? Now, Jesus came. Jesus died for Adam because through one man sin came into the world. To redeem him, he died on the cross. So, what is the benefit? What is the result of Jesus paying? Is the ransom on the cross. Let us read 1 Corinthians 15, 22. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Subindra Rajbudar, you are there? Rajbudar? Yes, I am here. My name is Avisek, Avisek Sensuri. Okay, sorry, brother. I think your name Oh, yeah, was... that, that uh, Subindra Rajbudar, brother, uh, uh, that is my uh, teacher's uh, name. So. Okay, Abhishek Budar. Abhishek Budar, please read 1 Corinthians 15 22. 15 22. Hmm. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be alive. See? Made alive. Ah, for in Adam all die. You tell me, in Adam all die. Who are this all? Who are this all who die in Adam? Is it only Christians? Tell me, is it only Christians? No. Then who? All means who? All humanity. All humanity. Oh, only Christians. All humanity. That means Hindus are All there? Of Muslims course, everybody. Are there? Everybody? Sure? Yes, yes. Buddha is Buddhism, yes. Christianity, Atheist, Islam. Yes, Islam. Atheist, yes. Yes. Jews, the Jews. Yeah, Jewish. Hinduism. Yes, Hinduism. Yeah. Everybody. So hmm. you all agree that everybody Our, are dying in Adam. Awesome. Yeah, very good. So let us read that verse again, brother. First Corinthians 15, 22. Read, brother. Stephen, brother, read. You need to put First the screen back. Okay. Uh, okay, read. Or, sorry, or, sorry. Read. Yeah, yeah, yes. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. See? The Bible says, as in Adam all die, all the people of this world are dying in Adam. It says, as they are all dying in Adam, the same way, everybody shall be made alive in Christ. Dear Buddhran, this is the effect, this is the benefit of Jesus dying for each and every mankind. This is the advantage of Jesus paying a ransom for Adam, dear brethren. Because everybody are dying in Adam. There's no exception, no religion, no caste, nothing. No creed, nothing, no differentiation. Death makes no difference. Everybody in this world are dying in Adam. What the Bible says? In Christ, all shall be made alive. Everybody, each and every person who are dead, they should come back alive. How? How? How can all they come back alive? How is it possible? It is possible because God has made a plan of resurrection. Let us read 1 Corinthians 15, 21. Uh, Emmanuel Buddha, can you read 1 Corinthians 15, 21? Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. See? By man came death. By man, the Adam came dead. By man, the Christ Jesus came the resurrection of the dead. This is the resurrection. This is a beautiful plan, mother, God has made. As everybody is dying in Adam, this is a confirm. This is the real truth. There is no change in that one. As it is the truth, similarly, all the dead coming back to life, the resurrection, in Adam is also the truth. You see, there is no necessary you see, for us to prove that everybody are dying in Adam. They are all dying. The death itself, each and every graveyard, each and every pain, sorrow, sickness is a proof that we are all dying in Adam. The Bible says, in Christ, all shall be made alive. How? The process of resurrection. Resurrection means what? You see, those who are dead and buried in the grave, they will all come back. Resurrection. That means what? Resurrection. That means the life has paused. They stopped. Again it will continue. That is the meaning of resurrection. Everybody, everybody will come back to life. Now who will come back to life? Is it only Christians? 
no each and every body in this world has everybody died in adam exception of any religion you see let it be any person they are not dying in adam in christ everybody irrespective of any religion belief caste creed everybody will come back to life in christ read acts 2415 stephen brother can you read acts 2415 yes and have hope toward god which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and unjust aha there shall be a resurrection you see both of the just and unjust there shall be a resurrection of the dead all the dead in this dead there are just and unjust systems now what is just and unjust you see the justified people and the unjust people bible just now we read there is none right as so nobody are justified all are sinners only you know but yet the apostle paul says you see there is going to be resurrection for the just as well as the unjust now who are the just you see the then we will see who are the just and who are the unjust read john 5:28 and 29 binod brother can you read john 5:28 and 29 Brother Binod, you're there. Okay, Emmanuel, brother, can you read John five twenty eight and twenty nine? Can marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all there in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall comfort they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation mm so what i say marvel not at this don't be surprised if i say for the hour is coming all that are in the graves where are all the dead people they are all in the graves they are all sleeping nicely that's what jesus said it is not me who was saying is jesus who was saying that all that are in the graves all are in the graves and they shall come forth you see when they shall hear his voice and come forth when jesus comes a second coming with a loud shout of a trump everybody who are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth who will come forth they that had done good unto the resurrection of life and they that had done evil unto the resurrection of damnation that means the good and the evil both the people will come back in the resurrection you see the good are the righteous people mentioned in acts 24 15 the evil are the unjust people that are mentioned in acts 24 15 so there are good people you see and uh, the bad people the evil people the good people are called the just people the bad people are called the unjust people the resurrection is day for both the dear brethren everybody will come you see huh? who are the good who are the just those who are believed in christ and are justified by the blood of christ these are the just christians these are the people who do here and there a little bit good activities in name of christ they will all come back in the resurrection they also will be raised from the dead but what about the wicked people who never accepted christ even they also will come back in the resurrection you see so the resurrection is going to be for everybody dear brethren And what happens after the resurrection you see everybody thinks that uh, all uh, the people you see when jesus comes uh, is going to stand before him in a very long queue jesus is going to open a big book book of life and judge everybody as per the deeds which are written in the book if they done done good deed they will go to heaven paradise if they done bad deed they will go to hell hell fire you see dear brethren judgment we need to understand what is the meaning of judgment correct no no okay now uh, you please answer my question who has died for all our sins who died for our sins who died for our sins who paid our penalty christ jesus christ paid our penalty okay let us read and get it confirmed whether jesus really paid it or not isaiah 53:5 Isaiah fifty three five. Abhishek Bhutar, can you read Isaiah fifty three five? Okay, I will read. 
but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The ch chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes uh, we are healed. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, dear brethren. He was bruised for our iniquities. All our sins Jesus bore himself. Not only my sin, not only your sin, the sins of the whole world. John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. Whole world, dear brethren. Jesus paid each and every body's penalty. Then again, if you give the same punishment for the sinner, how can it be a righteous judgment? Like for example, imagine if you are in a uh, Dubai and Middle East country, they are all very strict uh, justice is there. If you steal something, you will be given 50 lashes. The lashes will be so severe that you, you will faint for 10 or 15 lashes itself. It will be, and if you, even if you faint, they won't leave. The ambulance will be right there only. Immediately they will go and give the treatment and bring you back and give the balance lashes for you. Imagine if we are in, uh, you see, Dubai, 50 lashes are supposed to be given and first of all, we, somebody might come forward and tell, Sir, don't give it to him. He's very weak. For five lashes only, he will die. Instead of giving him, please come and give me the lashes. And instead of me, somebody takes my lashes. What they should do? They should release me. Instead of that one, if they come and tell, Raju, come, please. We will give you your lashes. Is it correct? No, dear brother, that is not correct. That is an unjust uh, thing. That is not the just thing. You see, that is not judgment. Uh, that is not at all just. Uh, this is injustice, uh, dear brother. Similarly, Jesus has paid for each and everybody sinner. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. After giving all our penalty to Jesus, calling him again, us to stand in the queue, open the books, explain to us all the sins and again give us the punishment. How is it called a just judgment? Therefore, we will study about judgment in the coming days. What does the Bible say? Did God send Jesus to judge the world, condemn the world? No. Read John 3, 16 and 17. John 3, 16 and 17. Binod Buddha, can you read John 3, 16 and 17? Uh, okay, I will read. Uh, John 3, 17. 16 uh, and 17. God. Brother, read 16 yeah. and 17. You, have, you, you don't have the Bible with you? Yes, I have a Nepali Bible, uh, but not an English Bible. Okay. Not a problem. I will, uh, yes, John okay. oh, I will... I will uh, uh, read, brother. Abhishek, brother, please kindly read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting. Hmm. Okay. Binodar, I think you can read. He got disconnected. 17th verse you can read. 317. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. See? God did not send his son to condemn the world. They were already condemned in Adam. Why again condemn him? But Jesus was sent that they might be saved. Dear brethren. So when will this resurrection happen? When will this judgment happen? We are going to study in judgment about judgment in the coming days. When will this resurrection of the dead happen? This will happen at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We all know that Jesus is going to return second advent back to this earth. And what is going to do? He is going to rule for a thousand years on this earth. 
Let us read Revelation chapter 20 verse 6. Ashish brother, can you read Revelation chapter 20 verse 6? Okay. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power, but they shall be priest of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. He shall reign with Christ for a thousand years. So Jesus, when he's going to return, he's going to rule for a thousand years. He is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. And what is the thing he's going to do when he's going to rule? The first thing Jesus is going to do is bind Satan. For a period of thousand years. Read Revelation chapter 20 verses 1, 2 and 3. Revelation 20 verse 1, 2 and 3. Stephen brother, can you read? Yes. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Okay. Jesus, when he returns, he is going to bind Satan for a thousand years. Why? Why bind Satan? It says that he should deceive the nations no more. That means he is allowed now to deceive the nations. You might tell, so many people tell when we tell this one, brother, now only everybody are not listening. If Jesus returns the second advent and if Jesus binds the devil, will they all listen? Huh? Will they all listen when Jesus returns the second coming? Yes, they will surely listen. Why they are not listening now? It is not for their fault. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded their eyes. They blind their minds. You see, hence they are not able to see the gospel light. Hence they are not able to accept Jesus Christ. You see, read 2 Corinthians 4.4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 4.4? 4, 4? Second Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which will live not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is who is the image of God, should sing, should shine upon them. See, the God of this world has blinded the eyes of many. Satan has blinded the eyes of many. Hence, when Jesus returns, the first thing he's going to do is, is bind him for a thousand years. Why? So that he may deceive the nations no more. Who are the nations? The dead people will all come back to life. To learn the truth. For making them easy to learn the truth. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. You see. Then what will happen? Let us read. 1 Timothy 2nd chapter 3 to 6. Uh, Abhishek brother. Can you read? 1 Timothy 2 3 to 6. Okay. I will read. Wait a minute. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of his truth. Hmm. Continue till verse 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. See, Satan will be burned so they may all learn the truth. Now, what is the truth? In this verse, the answer is given. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. What is the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, 
the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all. This truth, many of our Christians themselves don't know. They think uh, that, uh, you see, between God and man, there are a lot of mediators. You see, Saint Anthony or Saint Xavier, uh, Mother Teresa, Mother Mary, so many mediators are there. What does the Bible say? Between God and man, there is only one mediator. This is the truth. To give them this understanding of the truth, Christ is going to return at the second advent and bound Satan and resurrect all the dead. So they may accept, understand this truth. It says, this is the will of God. That means this is God's will. This is his desire. And nobody can ever do anything from stopping God to fulfill these things. This will definitely get fulfilled. How? It says, God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. You see? Now what is this? Why God says, first you should be saved, then come to the knowledge of truth. Usually when somebody witnesses to a new unbeliever to become, to draw him to Christ, what do we tell? We tell Brother, sister, please ask, uh, please come to the knowledge of truth and you shall be saved. You shall know the truth. Please know the truth and you shall be saved. Correct, no? That's what we say. Uh, believe in Jesus, you shall be saved. You know, understand Jesus, you shall be saved. That's what we say. So what does God say? What did it say? God wants all men to be saved. Then come to the knowledge of truth. Why? Because God knows that everybody, almost 80% of the world's population is dead and gone into the grave. First thing, they have to be saved. Brought back to life, to this earth. Same earth, in the same way. Then, they should be given the knowledge of truth. After opening their eyes of understanding, when Satan is bound, they will all come to the knowledge of truth. This is going to happen when Jesus returns the second advent and going to establish his kingdom on this earth and rule for a thousand years. You know, you all remember what is the Lord's Prayer? Can somebody tell me the Lord's Prayer? Who can tell me the Lord's Prayer? First uh, two, three verses. Who can tell me? What did our Jesus teach us to pray? Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Very good, brother. See, very simple. Our oh, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where? On earth. Thy will be done in earth. How? As it is done in heaven. Dear brethren, today in heaven, is there anywhere there is sorrow, pain, sickness? No. Same way, his will has to be done where? On this earth. In that way, God's kingdom shall come on this earth, dear brethren. This is the Lord's prayer. And definitely, this will definitely get fulfilled. You see, this is how, and this is the time in his kingdom, all people will come to the knowledge of truth and Jesus will be the world savior. So this is the subject about ransom. So, I request everybody to please uh, listen to the YouTube uh, uh, link, uh, what we are going to share. If anybody has got any questions, any doubts, they can ask. Anybody has got any questions, any any yeah. doubts they ask? Yes, pa yes Pastor. Yes, sir. Okay, Abhishek, brother. I need uh, you and uh, all my friends to pray for me because when I at night I am going to bed and sleep at night, Something uh, spiritual creature comes and uh, she, does, she, she tells me, I am a fairy, I am a fairy, I love you. She says, and uh, <laughs> you well, your voice is quite disturbing. Yes, your voice is quite disturbing. I don't know from where this spiritual creature came. Uh, she tells, uh, she is a fairy or a furry. She tells she is a party or fairy and she has sexual relations with me. Please pray for her to pray for me that spiritual creature be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Definitely, That's brother. 
definitely we'll remember uh, your uh, situation in a prayer definitely jesus will definitely help you out and uh, he'll give you the strength to overcome all these things uh, but all these things might not happen to you okay sure we'll remember okay any doubts any questions you have brother brother uh, Stephen, brother, please, is uh, jesus please. reduced only to a ransom what is his further role uh, in the what you can say in the divine plan yes besides being yes. ransom what is his uh, role in the divine plan of salvation definitely uh, there are other things also which our lord is going to do and uh, what are his different roles and what uh, he is doing now what he is going to do in the future elaborately we are going to study part by part in the coming days brother there's a subject which we are going to cover all these things in the details in the future, brother. Okay, thank you. I'll catch up later. Then. Okay, thank you. As it, as okay. it progresses. As it passes, sir. As it passes, sir. Okay, Emmanuel, brother, you have any questions? No, brother. I will let you know later if I have. Thank you. I think uh, you I and have... brother Stephen are together with uh, one place. No, no. I'm from Kathmandu, yeah. Oh, you're from Kathmandu. Oh, good. Yeah. But your English seems to be very familiar with Indian uh, accent. Okay, good. Where is he from? Where he's is he from? from? He's from Kathmandu. Kathmandu, Nepal. Okay. Nepal, Nepal. Okay. Okay. Abhishek, yeah. brother, you are asking. And you, and you, and you, are you from Tamil Nadu or Karnataka? I am from Bangalore. I am from Bangalore. Bangalore. Proper. Yeah. Proper. You're a Kannadiga mm -hmm. then. You're a Kannadiga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because uh, are you taking the Tamil sessions also? Yeah, I take yeah. Tamil, Kannada, ah, okay. English, and uh, Telugu. Not Telugu, but uh, mm. I can understand Telugu. But God willing, we will do Telugu in future also. We'll learn and do it. So you you understand uh, Nepali very well, or what? How is that uh, you? No, I understand English. The well. They are comfortable in English, so that's how we are compatible. All right. Because I thought, fine, you've been in Nepal for some time, that you understand their language, and that is why you 